So today, sex hormones. What's most important about hormones and sex hormones in particular to think about is that in early life, sex hormones act to organize our systems. And then later in life, sex hormones actually um, can influence our behavior. So I wanna talk um, about the set of experiments that was done that is a really cool set of experiments, which kind of blew my mind when I first learned about it, about what we think about as estrogen and testosterone. So we're gonna have a situation where we've got four little baby mice, we're gonna have two males and we're gonna have two females. And what we're gonna do is give them a dose of a hormone, okay, right when they're born. And it's gonna be a little dose and then we're gonna let them grow up. And when we let them grow up, we're gonna give them what's known as a social preference test. So we're gonna basically just put them in the middle of a cage and we're gonna put a male on one side and a female on the other. They're both sexually like experienced and ready to go. And we're gonna just do a social preference test to see which one they prefer to spend more time next to. Okay, so we've got two little baby boy mice and two little baby girl mice. We're gonna give the baby boy mice mouse, the first one we're gonna give him an injection of some testosterone. When he grows up, he's gonna look like a male, meaning he's gonna spend more time next to the female in the social preference test. The other little male, we're gonna give a dose of estrogen. The estrogen um, will be just a little dose and we're gonna have him grow up. And when he goes in the social preference test, he too will act kind of like a male with male-like behavior. So he will spend more time next to the female in the social preference test. And that's not that um, surprising. So he was born a male and he has male hormones and the estrogen didn't do anything to affect that. All right, so the third experiment that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little baby girl and we're gonna give her some extra testosterone. So when we do this, when she grows up, the little baby girl that had the testosterone injection will end up spending more time next to the female in this cage for the social preference. So her behavior as an adult will be masculinized based on her having this sex hormone, testosterone. And so maybe this kind of makes sense too. So you're basically giving a little baby girl a dose of a male hormone, and maybe it's not that surprising that it's masculinizing her. So the really cool part of this experiment comes into with this last one. So you have a little baby girl and you're gonna give her a dose of estrogen, okay? When she's little and then you're gonna have her grow up, you're gonna put her in this same dynamic and her actions as an adult will be like a male. So all four of these animals will act like males when they grow up, whether you give them testosterone or estrogen, right after they're born, and whether they're gonna be a male to begin with or a female to begin with, which is kind of crazy, right? So we think about estrogen as this female hormone and testosterone as this male hormone, and that might be the case for adults, but in kids, it's super different, okay? So these sex hormones actually have the ability to organize the entire system and how it develops. So if you think about being a male, you have an X and a Y chromosome. If you're a female, you have a X and an X chromosome. There are genes on that Y chromosome in males that masculinize the fetus. Our default as humans, if you have two X's and nothing interferes with your development towards being a female, you will be female. Being male is actually interfering with this process. So these, the Y chromosome has a genes on it that make proteins that basically go down and they make a testes and the testes then starts producing testosterone. Okay. So you might think, okay, so if you have testosterone, you become a male. So why, if you have testosterone, would you also become a male if you had started out as a female? So this is the way that this works. Um, testosterone is aromatized or changed into estrogen. That is just a fact of how this system works. So when you have a system where the Y chromosome is turning on genes that make the males have a testes start to form, the testes then release testosterone into the bloodstream. The body will turn that testosterone into estrogen and it is the levels of estrogen that are circulating that when they're high enough, they will masculinize that uh, fetus and make it turn into a male. 
Okay. So when you are a female, you do have low levels of testosterone and low levels of estrogen just circulating in your body. But you also have this other molecule called alpha fetoprotein. Alpha fetoprotein, its job is to bind up all of the circulating estrogen and kind of sequester it so it can't have effects on the body. This is happening in girls. And so basically, because it's taking all these sex hormones out of the system, this is why the default pathway is to develop as a girl. When you have too much estrogen in the system, the alpha fetoprotein can't handle that much. All right, and so then they remain in the system, they're not bound up, and that is what masculinizes the fetus and ends up having um, the male reproductive organs be formed on the outside and the inside. So this is kind of a really cool thing because it challenges everything that we think about in terms of estrogen and testosterone and also shows us that exposure to these things at an early age has a really powerful effect on the way that we behave in terms of sexual preference and in terms of just um, sexual behavior as adults. So I thought this was really cool and I wanted to share it with you guys because these high levels of circulating hormones have masculinized them. And this is kind of... Um, you know, goes against what we think of being as, as a PC, a politically correct, or just trying to remain as gender neutral as possible. And I do think that giving your kids as much choice to be exactly who they want to be, knowing that anything that is on a continuum like this has the potential to also be in a continuum with behavior, and that anything on that continuum is normal because it's what our body is telling us to do. But also be aware that there are some pretty strong sex hormone effects on these, particularly early in the development of a person. So anyway, this is just food for thought, and I appreciate you listening um, to me talk about kind of the way that sex hormones are set up in our system. Thanks. Join us every day in May for a new video. 